um, talking through taking us through the um, platform and uh, the science plan material, following with a uh, user experience sharing by our HKML committee member. And also we'll have a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. And of course, we'll also have a lucky draw. So we'll pick three winners and um, each winner will receive a one month lecture or premium membership. And of course, uh, we'll have a group photo at the very end of the webinar. So um, next slide. For our speakers of the day, um, we have two speakers from Lecturio, uh, Satria, the medical education consultant, and also Kate, the student relations uh, officer. And also we have Jeff, um, who's one of our HKMSA committee members who will be talking to us through um, his experience of using Lecturio. So we would like to extend everyone a warm welcome. And before we begin, um, just a few housekeeping items to go through. Um, please feel free to type any questions in the Zoom chat at any time during the webinar. But please keep your microphones and cameras off throughout the event until the very end when uh, we would like for, uh, we would love all of you to join in for a group photo. So um, next slide, without further ado, I will just pass the time over to um, Satria and Kate and um, they'll take us through the lecture like, platform. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Zeno and um, hello everyone. It's very, very nice to be able to talk to you this fine evening. Uh, my name is Satria Nushatlan. I'm a medical doctor from Indonesia. I'm also the medical education consultant, um, a medical education consultant uh, for Lecturio. Uh, we are a German-based medical education company, and we have this product, a platform that we believe can help you um, learn better, and not only support you in prepping for your exams, but actually create a strong uh, lasting foundation for uh, the basic sciences and the clinical sciences that you need as, um, as a pre practitioner. So Lecturio is, as you can see in this slide, uh, a new mindset. We encourage you to st stop cramming for exams, uh, help you truly master the medical concepts that you need to know and allow you to connect the dots from the beginning. Uh, we are an all-in-one from day one. We have uh, Q banks, we have um, video lectures, we have clinical cases, space repetition, quizzes, uh, schedules and guides, everything, uh, all of which we'll explain uh, shortly. And we are uh, affordable. Uh, we, we allow you to stop spending thousands of dollars for video-based education. We believe that um, amongst our competitors, we are one of the more affordable platforms. Um, and we uh, will show you why we are the good choice here. So the Lecturia educators, as we mentioned before, a lot of uh, the linchpin of our platform is actually uh, 6,000 video lectures that we have on our platform delivered by teaching award winners, uh, teaching award winning teachers. Uh, they are uh, winners of dozens of teaching awards and are completely dedicated to teaching. They are not just lecturers, clinicians who are very good at their jobs. They are actually people who are dedicated um, and continuously uh, grow their styles of teaching to, to fit their, uh, their audience. Um, they come from some of the world's best universities, um, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, UCL, and many, many more. Um, and, you know, through our platform, you have um, virtually a 24-7 availability for them. Um, and we'll show you just how, uh, you know, how convenient this would be for your uh, study styles. Now I want to take you to this um, short poll, um, which I'll explain why we need to answer this poll. So please take out your phones and um, uh, you know take a uh, take a photo of this and go to this link. I'm just gonna go. No, sorry, I accidentally stopped my screen share. Give me a second. Um, right, it's this way. Okay, um, I'm going to start the poll now. Right, so the first question here is how long does it usually take before you find it difficult to pay attention in class? Okay, the numbers uh, are not growing anymore. Just checking um, if anyone has not managed to take a picture of the slides yet, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the link in the chat group just so that we have a maximum participation from everyone here. 
Um, I've pasted the link to the um, uh, to the poll on the chat room. So please type it in and answer the first question. But for now, I wanted to explain a bit why this question is important. So um, attention span is one of the things that you know we complain a lot about as medical students, as, as, as you know, clinicians. Um, and although variable depending on individual factors, various different research articles have cited the 10 to 15 minutes mark as the general limit of attention spans of healthy human beings. So when your lectures, when, uh, when your uh, video lectures last more than 15 minutes, um, you know, psychology and um, many, many articles show that um, your attention span and your cognition reduced significantly um, compared to if the lectures and if the, if, if the materials you consume um, last less than 15 minutes. So here we see that a lot of people have, you know, long attention spans, um, but uh, that's fine. I'm just going to show you why and how we lay out our platform a certain way to help you. The next question here is what are your thoughts on flipped classroom on the flipped classroom approach? That is to say, studying concepts before class begins and using class time to target difficult concepts. And while we're answering this, um, the reason why we ask this um, is because we wanted to show you the benefits of flipped classroom and how Lecturia can help you incorporate this strategy. Um, in your daily classes, even when your teachers or your schools um, or curriculum does not, um, you know, welcome this approach as readily as they should. So flipped classroom um, essentially is the act of obtaining knowledge from various different sources um, before class starts uh, so that you may use your class time to discuss and to deepen your knowledge on certain topics. It has been proven that obtaining knowledge from various different sources, uh, using different modes of delivery and repeating them multiple times um, is a very important part of cognition and long-term retention of new knowledge. So here um, we see that, you know, apparently HKMSA members are very, very good students who all study the materials before the class starts. So this is good. Um, we're going to show you later on how the can help you, you know, implement this with less effort from your part. And the third question is, what do you think about system blocks in the current medical education curriculum? So a lot of medical edu uh, medical schools use the system blocks approach uh, where they you know block um, organ systems and study every part of it um, as a group and you know the reason why we're asking this question is because when building uh, when we built our platform we found that um, <clears throat> interleaving practices that is to say mixing contrastive topics together when learning or repeating a certain subject allows for better retention than non contrastive matter uh, manners of learning our platform allows you to perform interleaving with less effort from your side <clears throat> and allow you to plan your study session in a more um, guided and a more um, organized way than ever before. And, you know, as you can see, the answers here seem, seems to reflect uh, what we have known when we built this platform is that people often forget the knowledge that they've learned in one block when moving to the next block. That is, this is why interleaving practices has been, you know, advocated um, over, over block practices. Um, let's move on to the next question now. What do you usually do to make sure you memorize the facts that, you, uh, that you've learned? Do you reread them? Do you read them out loud uh, while memorizing? Do you do quizzes? Uh, or, you know, you're one of the lucky ones that can memorize by just reading it once. And the reason why we ask this question is because um, research has shown that uh, people who uh, reread materials multiple times actually retain much less than students that take tests or quiz themselves after reading a certain piece of text. You know, more of, uh, moreover, the um, more difficult these tests are, you know, the more demanding these applications are, um, the longer the information sticks. This has to do with, you know, how much cognitive effort is required for you, you to answer these questions, to pull these knowledge from your head, um, in order for you to remember the, the fact that you've learned. And, you know, this reflects your studying style, which is super good. And we're gonna show you later on how the jury can help you, you know, perform uh, this, uh, this strategy in an easier way. And, uh, um, you know, without having to prepare flashcards yourself, because also preparing flashcards by yourself often, um, you know, causes you to fall to what we call metacognitive bias in that you believe that you've understood something uh, just because you made them and you had a certain 
you know, idea of what you understood of the topic when you created those platform and you drop uh, the flashcards that you think you've understood much sooner than you should, which uh, reduces cognition in, in, in uh, the longer in a longer period of time, you know, longer period of time. Yeah. I think this is the last question. Uh, what kinds of material helps you study better? Do you learn better by reading text only books? Do you, uh, you know, illustrations, uh, do illustrations help, um, explain our video, or, you know, you're, again, the lucky ones who can study just fine with any type of materials? Mm, the reason why we want to, uh, why we ask this question is because of something called dual coding. Um, so, dual coding actually is a strategy. Um, that means or that says that when you learn something from different sources, so audiovisual, and then also um, uh, by reading something, um, that, that helps you understand the topic much, much faster and retain it for a longer period of time because this provides you with different anchoring points to support your cognition, such as the visible lecture, graphics, 3D anatomy models that you can use in real time. And we're going to show you how the curator can help you with this because it seems like more than half of you um, believe that explainer video um, and 3D models also help you in, in, in preparing for class. So I'm going to stop the um, the um, poll now. I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to my slides just a bit to continue the presentation. <clears throat> So what we mean by evidence-based learning strategy is that uh, we see classes, we see medical schools all over the world teaching students evidence-based medicine, but often in a non-evidence-based manner. Um, in Lecturio, but when we were building this platform, we um, gathered a lot of knowledge, a lot of um, prior best practices, especially from cognitive psychology, um, and in, uh, embedded it in our platform in several different ways. Uh, first one is interleaving. So we allow you to, we help you learn by alternating materials being studied, both the topics and the type of stimulation that, uh, that, you, uh, that you receive. So videos or uh, text or anatomy models. Uh, we allow you to, to, to perform dual coding, uh, linking abstract concepts to concrete examples. You know, we have our educators on the screen because this has been proven to help cognition over you know, a simple voiceover video. Um, educators of our platform explain with imagery, clarity, and memorable examples. We provide associated graphics and 3D models to illustrate the facts that the, the lecturers are explaining to you through our videos. The third one is problem-based learning. Um, as we have also um, told you just now, um, you know, using practice uh, or problem-based learning or practicing what you've learned um, will help you learn and retain what you've learned for a longer period of time. And with our QBank uh, that has more than 5,000 clinical uh, vignette cases um, with accompanying explanations of which questions are right and which questions are wrong, this allows you to um, study better and retain the knowledge longer. Uh, the fourth one is assessing to boost retention and space learning, generally the same, but the different one is that space learning uh, with our in-house algorithm, we will help you, um, you know, remember the things that you've learned by returning questions, quiz questions to you um, at increasing intervals uh, based on your confidence level and based on whether or not you've gotten the answers correctly or not after watching our videos. So this is what we meant by interleaving, just a small illustration before we go to the demo. Um, you can watch the video, you can take a quiz and then read related articles or books in our, uh, on our platform. The problem-based learning is we allow you to uh, solve clinical questions using our QBank and review the explanations and concepts um, to know where you went wrong and um, you know, uh, how, or what you got right. The space learning, uh, we will give you a quiz or uh, you know, around two, three questions after every video that will come back to you at different intervals based on your confidence level. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm going to explain the three pillars really quickly before we go to the demo. The first one is learn, uh, the second one is apply, the third one is uh, retain. So these are the three pillars that we have distilled from the research that we've done while we were building the platform. The first one is learn. With the video lectures, um, you know, of different topics available to you, of the entire medical curriculum available to you 24-7 for the duration of your subscription, you can interleave different topics and interleave different system blocks depending on what you feel is most important for you at, at any given point in time. So for example, when you're in your clinical phase, 
um, in your internal medicine rotation and you want to review the Krebs cycle, you can easily go back to our platform and, and just open up the bio, biochemistry um, slide decks from our platform. We have the article concept cards um, that are attached to um, almost all of our videos that allow you to also learn from text uh, based um, sources and 3D models for you to play with um, to anchor the knowledge that, that you've received from our videos. The second one is apply. We help you apply the knowledge that you've uh, learned from our videos by using our QBank questions. Uh, I'm going to show you in a bit how that looks like. The reverse learning that we mentioned is basically an explainer text of which, ones, uh, which one is the right answer, which one are the wrong ones, and related videos for you to review from, in, from inside the QBank. The third one is uh, retain. Um, we encourage you to assess um, your knowledge um, periodically to boost retention and space and, and practice space learning because um, space learning actually improve your cognition at a longer period of time. Uh, we found a graph um, when we, while we were researching for our platform that shows that Students that cram actually perform better during tests, marginally better, but after four weeks, um, the decrease in recall uh, ability between those who cram and those who space their learning um, is wildly different. Those who cram lose more than 50% of what they've learned, and those who do not cram only lost around 14% um, of what they've learned as opposed to the 50% of the cramming group. Understanding, assessing, and retrieving, I'm gonna show you how, in a bit how that works. So I'm going to go to the demo now. Second, right. So this is how it looks like when you log into our platform. As you can see here, uh, these are the three pillars that I've mentioned, the video library for you to learn the concepts, uh, the question bank for you to apply what you've learned, and the space repetition uh, tab for you to retain uh, or practice the, retain, uh, the retention of your knowledge. So video library looks like this. It's super, super simple. You have a lot of different uh, curriculum groups that we've designed to support different kinds of people. Uh, generic is almost for, uh, for everyone else. So USMLE for those who um, would like to do the USMLE process. Uh, and you know other, other curriculums are also available. You can filter it based on subject or organ system. And um, I'm just going to go to one of my most uh, favorite videos that helped me a lot when I was in medical school, which is on the thoracic viscera, um, specifically on the heart valves. So the heart valves is actually one of the things that I've had an issue with when I, uh, well, in medical school. And with this video, for example, I'm going to go run through the, the layout really quickly. We have a super clear, um, prominent video lecture um, video player, you can play pause, adjust the video sounds, um, adjust the speed, change uh, from, you know, the English closed captioning to other auto translated languages. If you require that, uh, you can adjust the quality of the video, um, add to your planner to, you know, to help you plan better. So you can decide, oh, wait, sorry, I think my connection. Give me a second. Right, um, tiny error here, sorry about that. Um, so you can add to planner, you can bookmark it, uh, you can use a 3D model that is available beside here to practice and to, you know, again, anchor what you've learned. Here you, you have, for example, the corda tendine, the trabecula, carne, and also the walls and the uh, mitral valves. You can see how many cusps they have, etc while um, here the educator uh, is named Dr. Craig Canby is explaining to you about everything. Um, what's interesting as well is that you can also search for specific things. Um, so here, uh, you can, uh, if I wanted to know something about semilunar valves, for example, um, I can go directly to, the, to this point in the video and just listen to the relevant explanations that I want to know at that point in time. Um, and What's interesting as well is that you can download the materials uh, if you have a premium subscription for you to use the images for your own you know, case reports, for example, and add some notes for you to recall the things that you've learned. Now, I wanted to show something that happens when you finish the video, which is the appearance of the quiz questions. 
the quiz questions are, you know, direct um, non-case vignettes questions that are designed to help you um, remember what you've learned and to test whether or not you've actually paid attention during the video. So what are the correct anatomical names for the cusps of the aortic semilunar valves? Here, the answer I think would be right, left, and posterior. Um, and right now, for example, I am not that sure. So because I'm not that sure, um, the algorithm will return this question to me in nine days. If I were sure, it would return it to me at a, at a longer period of time and I wasn't sure, but I got it right, it will return to me at a shorter uh, interval to make sure that I practice it uh, over and over again until I can recall this answer um, properly. Um, and you know, usually we have two to three questions uh, and, and interspersed in every in all of our videos, which amounts to around twenty thousand questions all over uh, in the entire platform. Uh, what I want to show you again, other than the video library, is the question bank. The question bank is a super interesting part of our platform um, because I think as a as a student, this is something that you really, really need to, sorry about that, um, don't know what happened, uh, that you need to be able to test your knowledge. And we have custom exam bundles. Uh, so based on topics, based on exams, USMLE is just uh, here because it's a super popular one all over the world. But you can also use, um, you know, the family medicine bundle, um, OBGYN before you go into your rotations, for example, to review. Uh, or you can also create your own custom test. So when you finished a video group, a video playlist, for example, uh, you can design your own question and turn on tutor mode uh, to get the answers at, and explanations on why you got things right and why you got things wrong. Um, we were just watching a video about cardiac anatomy. So I'm gonna go ahead and limit it to anatomy, specifically the cardiovascular system and go start the test. And here uh, we have the first question. I mean, this does not directly reflect to the um, heart valve video um, exactly, but um, in the coronary arteries video, the, the, there will be an explanation on this. So the question, for example, here you have the ECG, you have the question, you have the um, options. You also have the option to auto-translate um, the questions into other languages, 20 languages in total. Um, we also have the lab values. I mean, this is not necessary for this question in particular, but sometimes in heart failure questions, you would need to know, or heart attack questions, uh, you would need to know the cardiac uh, marker levels, which you can access here. Um, you can take notes so that when you see this question again in the future, you can answer them. And you can also use the calculator, for example, when you are uh, calculating the fluid resuscitation volume for burn patients or other questions that require this. So this is, for example, the right coronary artery um, I got it right. So this explains why I get things right, uh, which leads are affected by blockages in which arteries, which coronary arteries. And, uh, you know, a cool illustration made in-house by our illustrators and other, uh, you know, the other options are so given explanations on why they're wrong. You can go directly to the video. So if you want to learn about the anatomy, you can jump to the video about the coronary circulation anatomy. But if you want to specifically learn about STEMI and NSTEMI, you can go to the video here for four minutes um, to learn about uh, things. This is what I showed you just now as well. The fact that our videos are four minutes, 10 minutes, it also is in line with the cognitive science background of our platform uh, that, in, in that we wanted to make sure that our platform provides you knowledge in bite-sized portion and does not overwhelm you with you know, 40 minutes lectures uh, that, you, uh, that, that would overwhelm and basically you know, make you get bored after a period of time. So I'm gonna just end the block for now. And this is how it looks like when you end the block. You will be able to review your answers in case you turned off tutor mode. And after, um, at a maximum of 24 hours, this will go into your performance data, which is something I will go into um, now. So the performance data is um, a super interesting part of Lecturio uh, that allows you to track what you've learned. So how many learning sessions you've taken, for example, in the preclinical generic here, uh, how many minutes you've watched, how many answered questions, how many you got wrong and how many you got right. So this helps you keep track of um, the concepts that you've understood and you haven't understood and can go as granular as you'd like. Um, so you wanna go to histology, for example, and then you want to go directly to types of tissues and 
specifically videos on muscle tissue. And you can see how many questions you've gotten right, how many questions you've gotten wrong, um, and help you, you know, plan your study sessions even, even better. Now, the third pillar they want to go to is the space repetition. It's pretty straightforward, um, but it basically is a part of the platform where all the you know, quiz question lives. So after, uh, this will remind you when more than 10 questions are due by sending a reminder email to your uh, registered email address. And you can see how many are, how many are dues, how many are memorized and do the things that you, you need to do um, you know, as soon as they are due. Right, uh, there's also a function called book matcher so in your application, in the, in the mobile application of our platform, what you're able to do is uh, to take a picture of a book uh, or text, uh, after which the OCR technology in the app will uh, recognize certain words and match those keywords into relevant videos in our platform. There's also like, you know, if you are reading some of the books here, so First Aid, Robin's Photology, um, Guyton and Hall, um, etc. You can just go ahead and type a page number and it will link you to the relevant videos in our platform. Something else that I wanted to show you is um, the Lecturio concept cards. So we also have super cool uh, collection of concepts that we distilled for you based on our videos and based on other resources that we found. And uh, for example, it's super, super clear, the overview, pathophysiology, differentials, um, including the references as well. A lot. Uh, you can you have links to the videos that is relevant to the uh, to the um, illustrations in the picture illustrations that we made in house, uh, based on the knowledge that, based on the sources and you know things and points that you would need if you want to read about something really really quickly. Uh, something that you can make use of even if you don't have a membership a full membership with us is our COVID resources. This is something that we've made free for the duration of the pandemic. Uh, and it's super, super cool, um, super recently updated as well. So we have the overview, for example, um, that was updated last in December, I think. Uh, and it covers a lot of the things that you might need to know or you really do need to know as a medical student. Um, and in a, in a great depth as well, not just, um, you know, the usual superficial things uh, that you find in news articles, but actual scientific, scientifically supported backgrounds um, that explains also the spike proteins and, uh, and, and other things relevant to you. Something that is also interested, interesting is the case, interactive case files that we have. So this, you know, help guide you through algorithms, uh, the current teaching algorithms that our educators have prepared for you. Um, this is the, for the hypoxia management in ventilated patients, for example. So you have to answer yes or no, and then you can, uh, you know, you can basically train yourself to respond in clinical situations. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is body interact. So for uh, we have integrated body interact in our platform for institutional partners. So if you'd like to make use of this, um, you know, partners, um, we can partner with your school to provide you with this and allow you to use it um, in an embedded capacity within our platform. It's super, super interesting. It, it has along, uh, around 70 cases uh, in various different positions. It's a physiologically accurate patient that you can play with and uh, you know, basically prepare you for your exams and OSCEs. Right, two last, uh, I mean, a couple of small slides to go uh, before I throw it back to the moderators. So you can access it anywhere. Uh, anytime, even offline with our app, you can download it when you have connection and then watch it uh, while you're waiting for your bus, for example. Um, this is just some numbers about our uh, on our platform. We have more than you know 500 hours of videos, thousands of articles, um, 16,000 quiz questions, and more than 4,500 clinical vignette cases um, for free clinical and clinical knowledge. 20 plus language now available in the QBank uh, in auto translation. These are the subjects that they cover. Uh, just the, the USMLE is just a you know a placeholder. All I think all a licensing exams would cover all these topics as well. Now I want to close with why Lecturio. We have teaching award-winning educators from renowned universities with more than 200 years of combined experience amongst them. Uh, we are an all-in-one study solutions for both your medical school and your licensing exam preparations. We have high success and satisfaction rates from our users all over the world. 
and uh, we are affordable and accessible um, um, with our app and with our platform anywhere you are anytime. Now I want to throw it uh, throw the speaking opportunity to Jeff, uh, I think, um, to share his experience on, on using our platform. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, Satria. Um, would you mind on sharing the screen, please? So I'll just um, be doing a little bit demo. Um, yes, so um, I am Jeff, and I am one of the committee members in the Education Committee of HK, uh, HKMSA, and I am myself a third year medical student at Western Sydney University. So um, let me just share my screen. One second, please. Can you guys see my screen right now? Yep. So um, basically what I want to talk about is the things that I find useful um, on the lecturial platform. So there are basically three things that I find very useful. Um, first of all, I think it's very helpful for you to, um, if you want to refresh your memory on some content that you've, you have uh, forgotten. Um, let's say you've been on a summer holiday and you've uh, like first week into university and you've forgotten everything. Uh, in the previous year. So I think it's a really useful tool for you to refresh the memory from last year. And it is also very um, obviously a useful tool for you to revise for exams because they have their question bank function. Um, yeah. And also um, the second point that I want to highlight or useful thing about it is that uh, it helps you to con consolidate any knowledge that you didn't understand uh, in your tutorials or lectures in university. And uh, yeah, it basically helps you to clear up concepts. Um, and finally, um, I think it's a very concise and neat um, platform. Basically, essentially everything is on the platform and it's a very accessible, um, there's still all the resources are very accessible. So let me just show you um, how I use the question bank. So um, I've chosen the uh, clinical MBBS and BCHP um option from this drop down menu because i think this is um more similar to um what you know the australian university is uh the, the curriculum is more similar to what the australian universities is um teaching so i'll just click on create custom test and uh as actually has shown you before um you can then choose your topic area of interest so let's say um my first um since i'm going into my clinical year uh, let's say my first rotation is on vascular surgery. So I'll just deselect everything in the system and um, just do some questions on cardiovascular system and because they'll touch on some vascular surgery um, topics. And uh, I'll just leave the subject untouched and yeah, I'll just start the test. Um, so basically what I want to show you is um, is that I think they have very, so let's say you got a question wrong. So I'll just randomly question, um, choose a answer and obviously it's wrong. So I think it's really useful because it gives you a very detailed explanation of why you got it wrong. And that's uh, very helpful as a medical student because you always want to improve. You always want to find out what you have to, you know, keep working on. And um, I think uh, on top of that, I think it doesn't just, give you the, uh, the correct answer, but it tells you why the other options are incorrect as well. So that's just, um, yeah, more like, yeah, it's for your information, I think. And uh, second thing of all is that I like this function of um, um, the platform allowing you to cross out options that you don't want. So I think it very much mimics um, what happens in the real paper exam, because you'll very often be doing questions in like uh, by exclusion. So I think this platform, as I said, is very useful for you to revise on uh, for your for your paper exams um, in this regard. Uh, okay, so moving on to why I find it very useful uh, for you to consolidate knowledge. Um, I use this. Um, so I use this uh, function of the the, the video library. Um, let's say I want to revise on the RAS system, uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, uh, because I'm going into my vascular surgery rotation. So, um, yeah, just a second, please. Okay. 
okay, that's the wrong video, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, this is the video that I want to show you. Connection is very unstable at the moment. Okay, so um, what I want to highlight from this is that I think I find these diagrams very useful. Um, I wish I had this earlier or discovered this platform earlier in um, my preclinical years because I find it very useful to just sort of screenshot this diagram and use it in my uh, PBO tutorial sessions where I am required to you know, teach a topic to uh, my fellow students. So I think this is a very useful thing. And uh, second of all, I think um, it gives you these very succinct and concise bullet points, um, which are, I think, very, that helps you to know, um, or rather, I think Lecture like, highlights the very, uh, as we say, high yield content for, um, you know, our medical school exams. So what I, what I mean by high yield is um, these questions commonly present or commonly come up in our exams. So for example, this um, bullet point that this give, video has given, uh, it's on the angiotensin two action. So the, again, it's a very common question and uh, certainly in my medical school. So you can just uh, feel free to just kind of copy and paste. Uh, you can't copy and paste, but like you can uh, sort of screenshot or just copy those bullet points into your Anki decks, or you can just put it into your notes and yeah, just get it, bring it up whenever you want to just uh, have a look at it. And um, and it's also got some summary questions as Sasha has mentioned. Um, and I think it's very, it's a very nice touch because it incorporates the idea of space repetition and also uh, active, active recall, which are uh, found to be very useful techniques uh, in terms of studying in medical school. And uh, I think also um, just the recent thing that I found is um, I think all these videos are in bite size. So uh, let's say that I had just had a like ECG sort of a tutorial at university and I didn't really understand how to interpret one. So you can just very convenient, conveniently just search up a how, like ECG interpretation and it'll take you to um, a video lecture on how to interpret a uh, ECG uh, electrocardiogram. And uh, because of time constraint, I won't click into it, but basically I just want to highlight how accessible the information is. And last but not least, the thing, the um, this function, the book ma book matcher is uh, another thing that I find very useful for PBO tutorials. Uh, since we have to use it for, um, we have to do a lot of pre-readings or uh, research when we have to prepare for our presentation, uh, when we teach it to our uh, other students in the PBO group. So uh, how I use this is um, I would, for example, choose a, um, a textbook, uh, this uh, Gaijin and Paul textbook, I use it a lot during my preclinical years. And you can input a page number, so say uh, page 497, and that is exactly the page that is on uh, pulmonary ventilation. Um, feel free to grab your own uh, Gaijin and Paul and see if uh, 497 is uh, um, exactly the, the, the topic uh, pulmonary ventilation. So I think it's a very useful and saves you a lot of time uh, in terms of preparing for your PBL uh, tutorials. And yeah, and I would, and that is basically all, uh, all the things that I find useful on this platform. I very much recommend uh, you guys trying it out. Uh, thank you. So um, right now I'll un unshare my screen and let my colleague, uh, so ba basically we're going to our uh, Q and A session. Um, so, any questions that came up in the chat or the Slido link, uh, we would try to ask Kate and Statue to answer. So, the first question from Serene um, 
so uh, so uh, so Kate and Sutrasatria can just um, answer uh, once I read it out. Um, so the question is, uh, thanks for the intro and sharing. Uh, there are two questions. The first question is, was wondering if the database is American or Australian based because some other MBBS or MDCHP study resources use American sources. Uh, the second question is, uh, she was also wondering if the flashcards can be integrated into Anki so we can study offline too. All right, I can take this question. Um, so again, I'm Kate. I was mentioned at the beginning, but I've been kind of hiding um, for the first part of the presentation um, as of course, hearing from Tetria, who is actually a medical doctor is a bit more interesting than hearing from me. I do not have a medical background, but I've been with Lecturio for a few years um, and I work on our student external partnerships. Um, so, okay, for your first question. Um, so we do have an MBBS, MBCHB curriculum, um, but that basically means that when you go into the video library, you can select your curriculum. So instead of clicking USMLE or generic preclinical, generic clinical, um, you can actually click directly into um, the MBBS, MBCHB curriculum. Um, it's not separate content. It's content that is just organized in a way that makes more sense for MBBS, MBCHB. Um, and that's kind of how it is with all of our various curricula. We don't have separate content. The only separate content we have is for our nursing product, which is, of course, something completely different and not particularly relevant to you guys, I'm guessing. Um, and as far as the resources, um, so as Satria mentioned, our educators come from some of the top institutions around the world. Um, many of them are American. Um, and so we do, you know, we do have these sources and we are kind of focused on USMLE and that's kind of our baseline um, and where we're kind of focusing most of our content and the organization of that content. Um, but there are, you know, educators from all over. I, I don't exactly have a list off the top of my head of where they're from. Um, but yeah, um, as far as integrating the flashcards into Anki. Um, so the quiz questions, the space repetition are not exactly flashcards in the same sense. Um, as of right now, we don't currently have an Anki deck, but there is, you know, a project that may or may not be going on in the background. I'm not particularly or personally involved, um, but I've heard some things um, around the office or the virtual office um, regarding Anki, um, and perhaps that could be something in the near future. And if it does become something, I will let you know for sure. Um, but as of right now, we don't have any direct integrations there. Um, okay, I see we have another question. Is it clinical or the treatment questions mm -hmm. accurate? You want me to um, Satria, I'm going to hand this over to you. I think you're better equipped to answer. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Richard, uh, for this question. Um, well, for me, based on what I uh, while I was using the platform, it is generally accurate. Just because, uh, so the, the, as as Kate has mentioned, the basis of the platform, a lot of it is um, related to USMLE. Uh, some of the sources that we use um, are are, uh, are the first eight books. So the the guidelines that are incorporated in the questions uh, question banks as well are usually the American um, led guidelines. Um, it's a bit different, but you know the underlying science and usually the underlying um, the underlying uh, treatment modalities are, are are also the same. Obviously, country specific variations based on availability of drugs and also um, whether or not it has uh, approval by the government to be used in the country can be different, which is why we, uh, which is why Lecturio is not a replacement um, for your usual classes, for your lectures, and for your uh, national guidelines, but it is an adjuvant, it is an additional um, way for you to strengthen your foundations um, and also to just double down on everything that you've learned. So to answer your question, um, most of it should be accurate because uh, most of the times for simple diseases, for GP related diseases, especially uh, we use the same guidelines um, and uh, use the same drugs most of the times, but there are um, variations, obviously, that you need to check with your local guidelines as well. Um, playlist videos. Um, again, so thank you, second Richard here. Um, 
There is a playlist, uh, is there a playlist function that we can use for the videos and how to use the Curio best to prepare for OSCEs? Are there videos for how to carry out clinical exams or tips at least? So we actually have a super interesting link there, um, how to present a patient with confidence. We currently do not have, um, you know, step-by-step uh, like OSCE guides. Uh, we don't have the step-by-step -step how to put on an IV line, for example, or how to perform um, extraction of uh, clavus, um, for example. We don't have that, but uh, we do have, you know, the videos with uh, related to the underlying treatment. So it's more um, an explainer videos as opposed to step-by-step -step videos. However, we do have uh, what we call the uh, um, an article series um, about surviving medical schools, I mean, the Medi medical school survival guide. Um, and we can give you the link after this, but that's something that is super relevant to OSCEs, I think, uh, to present your patient in uh, using the SOAP uh, manner. The playlist function, yes. So all our videos are divided based uh, into like playlists uh, based on the umbrella topic that they cover. But when you add it to your uh, to your planner, it will show up in the same way and you can organize it uh, based on, on uh, whatever, however you'd like as well. So it, it will show up in the same way as our videos usually show up. Kate, do you want to jump into that as well? Yeah, we also, um, if you don't want to use the exact study planner for that, or if you want to just have a group of videos, say, um, videos that are on topics that you find challenging that you just know you're going to have to review, you can also use the bookmark function and that's sort of like making little folders of them. Um, you know, if you want to use your study planner for specifically what you need to study versus bookmark function is something that you can kind of collect um, content over time and put them in playlists, so to speak. Right. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we, I think we have a few more questions through direct message. Um, so with this question, um, it's quite similar to previous question, but just seeing if you guys have any thing to add on to it. So um, it says, I'm a senior student and exams place more emphasis in management instead of preclinical knowledge. Does this platform have anything that targets So yes, um, I think, do you mind if I share my screen really quickly again? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to show you better if I share my screen. So uh, what we what we what I showed you just now is the like the preclinical side, but as I've explained, uh, we also have things that are you know geared specifically to clinical students. So, you know, half of our library is geared to clinical students. So I'm going to go to uh, just here, just because it's easier to group it based on the clinical aspect. I. Uh, a lot of our videos are actually case-based, so it's not just uh, you know basic science about the disease itself, but also case-related. So I'm going to go to neurology, for example, and then we're going to see here. Uh, no, sorry, not that uh, dermatology, and we can go to skin infections, and then you have these kinds of things. So derma case, 23-year-old man with bumps in his, on his penis, and it not only explains about the disease itself, but also um, you know how to treat it in a very, very case-oriented situation. So I think this answers the question that, yes, it will help you as a clinical student as well, uh, because our clinical content is specific for that part of your education. And uh, uh, just one more question. Um, so uh, it says, what makes Luxurio stand out from other competitors in the market? Um, I think I'm gonna answer half of that, um, and then Kate is gonna jump into that as well. So for me personally, what makes the Curio super special um, is the video aspect of it. Um, it not only, it explains it in a way that is familiar to you. Um, uh, it shows a teacher in the image, it shows you um, uh, slides, it shows you graphics, and it has um, a lot of different tools that you can use um, concurrently with uh, while you're listening to the videos and to support your knowledge, the, the knowledge that you've gained in the videos. It also incorporates a very, very deeply science-based strategies for learning. So not only um, clear videos, not only super um, high yield topics, but also helps you retain this knowledge. This is what I found uh, super, super important. And um, in the case that your school has uh, have um, um, an institutional wide license with us, uh, a super cool feature that I think has a lot of potential in medical education is that 
they will be able to um, you know, track your progress as well, um, university-wide. So that, that means should the educators be inclined to do it, they will be able to design their classes in a way that really, really targets people who are struggling, people who are um, you know, finding certain topics difficult or target, uh, target certain topics that most of their students find difficult. So it's super adaptable. It's super, super um, granular as well. You can go as deep as you like to see your performance. Um, and um, you know, it, it is based on science, evidence-based learning delivered in an evidence-based manner. Um, maybe Kate wants to add some things to that. Yeah, so I mean, perfect answer already. Um, but what I would also say is specifically many of our competitors are um, very focused on kind of the end game so just your end result your last exams you know doing those clinical case questions which of course is super important um, and we do focus on that too but through this learning science through all of this we're actually a resource that you can use regardless of where you are in med school if you are in day one i just linked the medical sur school survival guide um you know it is kind of based on the US four-year model, but a lot of the content and the information is also applicable around the world. Um, you can also be starting off um, with you know, med school and start from day one and start using Lecturio and build it up over time. Or you know, you're coming in as a third year, you're coming in as a fourth year, you're coming in you know, just for a review as you're doing an internship after graduation, anything you're able to use the resources from Lecturio because we have everything here for you that, um, you know, that is going to enhance your learning, whether you're learning it for the first time or whether you're reviewing it, you know, weeks, months, years later. Um, so that's that's what really sets us apart, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if anyone else, Jeff, if you had anything you wanted to add about that as well, having tried the platform um, or if we've covered it. Yeah, so uh, I, I um, pretty much agree with you, um, Kate, because I've uh, used other platforms before as well. And I think um, Lecture has that uh, edge in that provides you uh, a lot of um, supplement information. So it doesn't just give you the questions, but also gives you the lectures and also the textbook information. So I think it really aids you in the understanding of the topic. So that's a really uh, good feature. Um, so thank you, Kate and Satria. Uh, just, I believe um, that's, uh, I think, one last question for tonight. Um, so it's, it's from Serafina, uh, it says, uh, is it possible for me to create a custom list of questions and share it with my friends who are also using Wachuria? Um, So within our platform, not specifically, if I'm understanding your question correctly, um, uh, to my knowledge, that is not a possibility and I don't think it's anything that is on the table um, to develop right now. Um, but I mean, if you're watching the same videos as your, you know, classmates as your peers, then you can, you'll also, of course, be getting the same space repetition questions that are coming back in your account. Um, but as of right now, we don't have the, um, you know, like intersharing between accounts or anything like that. Um, yeah. Okay, thank right, you. So I just wanted to maybe close a bit with this last slide, um, just how to contact us um, as the students at lecture.com is our email. Uh, we encourage you as well to reach out to us if you think that you're capable of linking us with your faculty members. Uh, as we've mentioned, a lot of our benefit can be unlocked uh, even further with an institutional partnership. Uh, and there is a chance that you would be able to use the platform for free if, if your institution purchases a license with us. So in the case that any of you here has that link um, or feels like this would be possible with their universities, please you know, send an email to that address and you know, we'll, we'll advocate for our case with your university. Um, thank you so much and right back to you, Zeno. All right, thank you, Satria, and thank you, Kate. And uh, also, thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. We're coming towards the end of this um, session. So we would like to give a huge thanks to the speakers, um, Kate, Satria, and Jeff. And also, uh, I'd like to extend our gratitude to our committee members, Ivan and Stephanie, for the coordination and tech support. And uh, we do look forward to collaborating with Lecturer again in the future. Now, um, just final thing, now, if you could all switch on your cameras, we'd like to take a group photo with everyone. Um, Ivan, just let us know yep. when uh, you're ready. Yeah, so, yeah, please turn your camera, then, yeah, oh, maybe, don't be shy, you know. 
Okay. Um, anyone else? No, whatever. Quite a few people. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm gonna. Okay. Three, two, one. I'm gonna take one more. Yep. Three, two, one. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. All good. Um. Thank you, everyone. And also uh, uh, a last reminder. So for further information of HKMSA's upcoming events, make sure to like our Facebook page. And also uh, you can follow us on Instagram and also check out our official website at hkmsaustralia.com. And uh, membership is currently free of charge for HK medical students in Australia. So feel free to invite your friends if they haven't joined us already. And uh, that's it for today. We'd like to thank Lecturio again and also um, our speakers once again for their generous sharing. And I hope you all find it uh, informative and useful and uh, we'll see you all again in the near future. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so everyone. much for having us.